awesome guy. I'm happy that Stephen Colbert of the Colbert Report has joined that group of celebrities who will use their media position to benefit others. As you can see from Mr. Colbert's written testimony, he has taken the time to walk in the shoes of migrant farm workers and he urges reform of our immigration laws. I'm happy that the United Farm Workers helped introduce me to Mr. Colbert, who I'd not met before, so we could spend a day on a farm together. His, ex his actions are a good example of how using both levity and fame, a media figure can bring attention to a critically important issue for the good of the nation. I would like to recommend that now that we've got all this attention, that you excuse yourself and that you uh, let us get on with the, uh, the three witnesses and all the other members there. I'm not asking you not to talk. I'm asking you to leave the committee room completely. I'm here at the invitation of the chairwoman, and if she would like me to uh, remove myself from the hearing room, I'm happy to do so. I'm only here at her invitation. I'm actually going to thank Mr. Colbert for bringing the attention to the question of, of uh, workers in the field. Um, it's always tough to say anything to him because you're not sure what's going to happen in return and what will appear on TV. And I know he would never take anything out of context. Uh, <laughs> so that uh, I guess I, I might as well quit while I'm ahead. Could, could I just say that after listening to Dr. Carol Swain, I withdraw my previous request that I had made to Stephen Colbert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And we will turn now uh, to Mr. Colbert for um, his five minutes of testimony. Good morning. My name is Stephen Colbert, and I am an American citizen. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today. Congresswoman Lofgren asked me to share my vast experience spending one day as a migrant farm worker. I am happy to use my celebrity to draw attention to this important, complicated issue, and I certainly hope that my star power can bump this hearing all the way up to C-SPAN 1. As we've heard this morning, America's farms are presently far too dependent on immigrant labor to pick our fruits and vegetables. Now the obvious answer is for all of us to stop eating fruits and vegetables. And if you look at the recent obesity statistics, you'll see that many Americans have already started. Unfortunately, my gastroenterologist, Dr. Eichler, has informed me in no uncertain terms that they are a necessary source of roughage. As evidence, I would like to submit a video of my colonoscopy into the congressional record. Now, we all know there is a long tradition of great nations importing foreign workers to do their farm work. After all, it was the ancient Israelites who built the first food pyramids. But this is America. I don't want a tomato picked by a Mexican. I want it picked by an American, then sliced by a Guatemalan and served by a Venezuelan in a spa where a Chilean gives me a Brazilian. Because my great-grandfather did not travel across 4,000 miles of the Atlantic Ocean to see this country overrun by immigrants. He did it because he killed a man back in Ireland. That's the rumor. I don't know if that's true. I'd like to have that stricken from the record. So we do not want immigrants doing this labor. And I agree with Congressman King. We must secure our borders. Of course, I'm sure Arturo Rodriguez is saying, who then would pick our crop, Stephen? First of all, Arturo, don't interrupt me when I'm talking, that's rude. Second, I reject this idea that farm work is among the semi-mythical jobs that Americans won't do. Really? No Americans. I did. As part of my ongoing series, Stephen Colbert's fallback position, where I try other jobs and realize that mine is way better. I participated in the UFW's Take Our Jobs campaign, one of only 16 people in America to take up the challenge. Though that number may increase in the near future, as I understand, many Democrats may be looking for work come November. Now, I, I'll admit, I started my workday with preconceived notions of migrant labor. But after working with these men and women, picking beans, 
packing corn for hours on end side by side in the unforgiving sun, I have to say, and I do mean this sincerely, please don't make me do this again. It is really, really hard. For one thing, when you're picking beans, you have to spend all day bending over. It turns out, and I did not know this, most soil is at ground level. If we can put a man on the moon, why can't we make the earth waist high? Come on, where is the funding? This brief experience gave me some small understanding of why so few Americans are clamoring to begin an exciting career as seasonal migrant field worker. So what's the answer? Now I'm a free market guy. Normally I would leave this to the invisible hand of the market, but the invisible hand of the market has already moved over 84,000 acres of production and over 22,000 farm jobs to Mexico and shut down over a million acres of U.S. farmland due to lack of available labor because apparently even the invisible hand doesn't want to pick beans. Now, I'm not a fan of the government doing anything, but I've got to ask, why isn't the government doing anything? Maybe this ag jobs bill would help. I don't know. Like most members of Congress, I haven't read it. But maybe we could offer more visas to the immigrants who, let's face it, maybe we could offer more visas to the immigrants who, let's face it, will probably be doing these jobs anyway. And this improved legal status might allow immigrants recourse if they're abused. And it just stands to reason to me that if your coworker can't be exploited, then you're less likely to be exploited yourself. And that itself might improve pay and working conditions on these farms. And eventually, Americans may consider taking these jobs again. Or maybe that's crazy. Maybe, maybe the easier answer is just to have scientists develop vegetables that pick themselves. The genetic engineers over at Fruit of the Loom have made great strides in human fruit hybrids. The point is we have to do something because I am not going back out there. At this point, I break into a cold sweat at the side of a salad bar. I thank you for your time. Again, it is an honor, a privilege, and a responsibility to be here. I trust that following my testimony, both sides will work together on this issue in the best interest of the American people, as you always do. I'm now prepared to take your questions and or pose for pictures with your grandchildren. I yield the balance of my time, USA number one.